In the last video, we created our pickup actor and added some functionality to debug our inventory system so that now when we hit play, we can go over our pickup actor and hit 1 to see what is on our first slot in the inventory. However, we have no visual representation of our inventory right now, so that's something we will work on today. First, we will go in our widgets folder and right click here to create our first widget. Under user interface, select widget blueprint. Call that one inventory slot. Open it up and go to the designer tab. First of all, you want to change the setting here from fill screen to desired on screen. So our widget appears in the size it will be later on. Okay, now let's work in the hierarchy. Delete the canvas panel and instead grab a size box and drag it on top of our inventory slot here. For the size box, change the width and height override to 64 by 64 pixel. That will be the size of our inventory slot. Now search for a canvas panel, drag it on top of the size box and make sure it's set to fill so it fills out all the space of our size box. The next thing we'll need is our actual button, so search for button and drag that on top of your canvas. Go to the button and for the anchor select the one on the bottom right here which means basically that it fills out all the space and set all of the offsets to zero. So now you can see that it fills out all the space of our size box. So currently it's 64 by 64 pixels. Also give it a name, call that one slot button. And we will change its style now. Go under the normal tab and for the image select the inventory button which you downloaded in the first video. Here you should also select the draw as image and you can give it a nice dark tint. If you want to get the same result as in the showcase video just go to the hex linear and type in 2 2 2 2 2 2, two 6 times 2 and 2 app. Hit OK. So now it became really dark. This style we will also use when our button is disabled. So just right click on our normal style and select copy. And for the disabled select paste. Now let's go into our hovered. Select or just also paste it there. Expand it and choose a different tint. You would use a bright color like blue or orange. In the showcase video I used orange and the hex linear code for that one will be F F four two zero zero F F. Hit OK and you get that nice orange color here. You can copy that one and paste it for the press state and just go in here and make it a little bit darker and hit OK. That's it for our button. Compile and save. What we'll also need is an image for our icon. Search for image and drag that directly on top of our slot button. We can call that image our item icon and set it to fill horizontally and vertically with a padding of 1. So you just have the slot button as a 1 pixel border of our item icon. Also make sure that its visibility is set to hidden by default. Then we will also need a text which shows the amount of items on the slot. Drag this one on top of the canvas panel. Make its font to bold italic and the size, font size just to something really small like 9 for example also you have to change the Z order to something higher than 0 so it appears on top of our icon here make the anchor to the bottom right set the size to something like 32 pixel by 13 pixel 
and the position on x will be minus 32 and minus 13 just so that it appears right around the bottom left corner here. Also give it a name, call that one text amount and we'll change the default text to something like uh, x99 so we see how it looks like. The justification should be the align text right and make the shadow color full, fully opaque give it a shadow offset of 0.5 in X and 0.5 in Y. So now you can see it much better. For this one also set the default visibility to hidden and make sure that it is a variable. Now you can compile and save and we finish designing our inventory slot. Go into the graph and we'll create some variables. The first one will be our slot index and its type will be an integer. So basically saying what index is the slot in our inventory. Make sure that it's editable and exposed on spawn. And we need another variable which will be a reference to our actual inventory actor. So call that one inventory reference. For the type select bp underscore inventory reference and it should also be editable and exposed on spawn so when we actually create our slot widgets they will be told what index they are in our inventory and what our actual inventory reference is we will need two more variables to store some data one will be the item info on our slot its type will be s underscore item info you don't have to make that one editable and exposed on spawn because we'll change it inside of our blueprint here. And the last one will be the amount of items on the slot. Make sure to spell it correctly. Change its type to integer. Compile and save. And we'll have to create only one event in here. So add a custom event and call that one update slot. Which means whenever something happens to a slot, when there are items added to it, or when there's something removed from it, you will call this event and it will update our image here, the amount here, and also whether you can click on our button or not. So when we update our slot, you first want to drag in your inventory reference and call a function with the name is empty. Is slot empty, right? The index should obviously be the slot index of our widget. And we'll create a branch here just by holding B and left clicking. Connect the empty for the condition and connect the execution wires. So if our slot is indeed empty, we will grab our slot button and set is enabled. Don't check this one. When a slot is empty we won't allow the player to click it because there's nothing on it. Then we will grab our in item icon and set its visibility also to hidden. So that's everything we have to do for the true path. If it's false so there is something on our slot we first want to grab our slot button and set it enabled. Just copy and paste that. But this time it will be enabled. Then we want to set our item info and the amount. And we will get that from our inventory reference with that little function we created called get item info at index plug in our slot index again and for the item info we'll set that one to our item info here and the amount set that one to the amount and then we want to set and then we want to grab our item icon again and set brush from texture 
and the texture you will get from your item info. So drag that in, break it, and we'll get our icon. You don't have to worry about the match size because we define that our slot should be 64 by 64 pixels and there is a padding of one to each side so our icon here will be 62 by 62 basically. Also make sure that after you set the brush grab in the item icon again and set its visibility but this time we want to show it. So normally you would use visible but in this case we will use hit test invisible and what this does is if we go to the designer our item icon here will still be shown but when our mouse is over the icon and we press the button the icon won't notice it but our slot button here. So we can press on the icon and still use the click event of our button later on. Alright, that's it for our update slot event. Now what we need are two bindings for our text here. First you will bind the content, create a binding and call it something like text amount binding. It will just be our amount to a string. And right click somewhere here, get an append node, append an X to our amount. If we have 99 items on one slot, there will be X 99 or times 99. And for that return value, drag it in the text return value here and will automatically be converted. Bind save. Now go to the designer again and we will need one more binding which is for the visibility of our text because we only want to show it when our item first of all when there is an item on our slot and if our item is visible so for the visibility create a new binding and call that text amount visibility compile and save so what you want to do is drag in the inventory, reference, the inventory reference and uh, is slot empty. If it is empty, you want to use that return node and just plug in hidden. If it is not empty, you want to copy the return node, paste it here drag off of it but we don't want to make it visible because we first have to find out whether our item is stackable so grab in the item info break it expand it here and of the can be stack boolean search for select and just use the select here the return value you can plug into the return value of our return node and now we can select when our item can be stacked, we want to make it hit test invisible again. If it can't be stacked, it will just be hidden. Compile and save and that's it for our inventory slot. So that's it for this video. In the next one we will create our inventory widget and create a function that populates it with all of our inventory slots. See you then.